Hi, and thank you for watching this Finance with Excel video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get data from the internet into a Mac um, using Excel. The process is quite different for the Macs than it is for the PCs, and so uh, I will walk you through how to do it. Basically, um, the gist is you actually have to save a, a text file that um, that the Excel will then open up and, and import data from. And these text files ultimately will end up being saved in the queries folder. So um, I'll just I'll, I'll show you kind of what it means. So it, the way it works is I come here to Excel and I go up here to the very top data. So there are two different data. There's a data here and a data here. You have to go to the very top. Your students, I promise, will get confused on that. You go to the then you go to get external data and then run a saved query. Now, when you click on run a saved query, it automatically comes to this queries folder that is associated with Excel. And then it's got a list of all of the queries that you've saved. So these are some queries that I've saved in the past and then you just click on one of these queries and so like that and then you click get data and then it imports the data into um, uh, into Excel for you so let me show you how to create uh, one of these it's, it's, it's quite simple so suppose we want to get this exchange rates data um, that we used uh, in in the uh, the previous for in the PC version um, for the exchange rate calculator and so we just highlight and we copy this um, this uh, this URL and then we just open up a uh, we open up a word document and then we paste the URL and we have to make sure that we paste the URL in the very top corner of the document and then we have to put four or five or six or something like that um, enters at the very end because if you don't I don't know exactly why but if you don't uh, it won't read it then you save it so when we go to uh, file up here at the very top and we have to save as well we want we have to make sure that we save it as a plain text you can't save it as a rich text you have to save it as a plain text document and then put it in that queries folder now the where to find the queries folder I'll just show you real quick um, if you go to your finder you go to applications you go to Microsoft 2011 you click on office and um, your queries folder should be in here. So let me make this bigger so we can see. And then your queries folder is right there. And then there's all my queries. And so that's where you find it. So you need to save it um, right there in, in your queries folder. And then it will show up really easy. And then I already have this particular one saved. So you would just click save. I'm not going to do it because I already have it. Um, and then uh, we can get rid of that. Now we just come back to um, Excel. Uh, and we go to data, get external data, run saved query. And it says, well, what do you want? Well, we saved this as xratescom.txt. So we click get data. It says, where do you want to put the data? Let's just put the data in A1. Click OK. Now it's thinking and it's going to retrieve the data for us. And it retrieved all the data for us. Now notice when we did the PC version, we could uh, choose do we want just the top date graph or just the bottom graph you can't do that with the with the, the Mac version you have to take the entire page but all it means is that when you're referencing to this page you just have to limit the the cells it's, it, uh, just specifically pick the cells that you want and so doing this um, this is how you get your data into Excel for a PC and I've I've got a whole bunch of these saved so, for example, uh, there's another website that I use where I, I pull in uh, current LIBOR rates. And so I go to, for the US dollar, so I go to data, get external data, run saved query. And then I have this USD LIBOR um, text document right here. I also have a, a couple of other LIBORs, but um, and I can just click get data. Where do you want to put it? Put it on A1. And then um, you it see it's getting the data, it's thinking, and then it brings back all the data. So now this particular website will give me the, the LIBOR, um, the current LIBOR, or the previous day's LIBOR for the uh, various time frames, um, and then we have this data. So I actually use this um, to help my students calculate um, yield curve, or uh, you do cover interest rate parity when I'm teaching um, this in international finance. So this is how you get data into a PC. Um, I hope this is helpful. Thanks. Or into a Mac.